Hello, hello everyone. The stream is starting. So, don't know how many of you watched the news conference that just was had about Path of Exile Affliction, but there's a lot of changes coming. Hi, Ron! I guess I'll first ask, how are you today? I personally am quite excited to jump into this and go through the myriad of changes. Because <laughs> it is quite something. They have decided to do something fairly groundbreaking, this league. And I honestly don't know how I feel yet about it. Because <laughs> it is a bit weird. Okay, well, I was intending this stream to be going over the alt quality, or not alt quality, um, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, wait, <laughs> I was intending for this entire stream to be going over this, to be going over the uh, Blast Rain Ballista build that uh, we've been working on. I've managed to get the damage up a considerable amount more, and also the defenses. But I don't know if that matters anymore. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't think that matters. Because... Uh, I don't think we have any way of actually properly predicting what this league is going to be now. So, they have removed a number of things, and more importantly, they've combined a bunch of things. So, the alternate quality gems that I would play Heist for, and have been playing Heist for for a while, have been removed from the game completely. The same thing with all Labyrinth enchantments on all gear have been removed. And in their place, we now have Transfigured Gems, which are a much more extreme version of the alternate quality gems, and also much more accessible. Uh, they make major changes to the function of a skill, rather than just making notable statistical changes. Like, for example, if you have an alternate quality of, uh, let's say, Inspiration Support, you can get more Critical Strike instead of Duration on its buff. Well, now they have added Transfigured versions of, or they're adding Transfigured versions of all Active Gems, Active Skill Gems, uh, minus the supporty ones like Auras and Heralds for a reason. Uh, these Transfigured Gems are meant to completely change how a skill works. Uh, the, main, the main example that they gave in the stream that I was just watching about the event, or sorry, about the League, they were saying that, for example, with Ray Zombie, instead of you finding a corpse and raising a zombie from that corpse, instead it no longer... If they do with the Transfigured version, it doesn't require a corpse, and instead the zombie falls from the sky and does area of effect damage based on your minion damage. It becomes basically an area of effect spell instead of a minion spell. But it still scales on minion stuff. So they've made some very, very drastic changes to how gems work. Uh, which also means that all of my alternate quality farming that I do is now gone. <laughs> which is kind of sad. 
But, I mean, uh, we can always find more ways to make money. Uh, so, interestingly enough, they have scrapped Metamorph. The entire Metamorph League has been removed from the game, except Catalysts. Uh, Catalysts have been rolled into Ultimatum, which has been reintroduced to the game. Uh, they highlighted a bunch of technical reasons why they had to remove Metamorph. It just... It was underwhelming for what they wanted, and it was also causing a bunch of design issues with every following release past it, because it needed to be adapted to meet every other... It needed to have every single monster that was added to the game. Uh, it needed to have special setup at, for how it would be involved with Metamorph, and... They have removed Metamorph more or less because of that. They highlighted some other reasons, but honestly, I don't think the other reasons really hold water. It's pretty obvious that it's because of the dev change. Like, like, like the huge... Oh, that's the wrong button. It's pretty obvious that it was removed because it causes a lot of technical problems. And it also isn't, like, incredibly rewarding. So they removed that one area from the game. They removed Tane as a character. They removed just the Metamorph mechanic in general and replaced it wholly with Ultimatum. And it does sound like they understand what was wrong with Ultimatum the first time. Because to recap Ultimatum, basically, you uh, end up in a circle where you have to survive and fight waves of monsters until a certain amount of time has passed, and then you have the option, then time freezes, and you have the option to either take the reward it offers you, or to double down and to go for a different reward, but you have to survive another wave. And you can do that up to ten times. And each time the reward gets better and better, but each time it gets more and more risky. Uh, the biggest problem with Ultimatum before was that it was just spawning hell rare monsters. Just, like, rare monsters that just had the worst sets of attributes that were just either unkillable or just awful. Like, certain builds worked really well against them, and everyone else just suffered. Which was why it kind of sucked. Uh, they have changed it, they stated, was that it was just flooding everyone with rare monsters, and now that they have changed it, it's more going to be... It sounds like the monsters are going to be harder on their own without being rare monsters, necessarily, so that they'll have their own base types and such. Which is interesting. We'll see, we'll see how that ends up working. I, have, I was kind of surprised and sad to see metamorph leaving but i mean eh it doesn't actually have a huge effect on the game which is kind of the reason why it doesn't matter to me too much uh so actually going back to other changes because they have made a lot of changes Basically, they have... I'm trying to think of what the best way is to put this. They have added a secondary set of ascendancies now as part of this new league where you can jump into areas kind of like Volside areas and you do whatever you need to do in there and if you're lucky, you'll find NPCs who can give you quests, follow their quests, and you will get access to a secondary ascendancy that you can add to any character. Uh, from the sounds of it, there's three separate ascendancies that are secondaries, and every character has access to these three. And they each allow one thing or another to be added. One uh, option was Tinctures, uh, was, was what one of the ascendancies unlocks, which is basically, it takes the slot of a flask, except for you just toggle it on or off. And you can only have one at a time, but they don't seem to have a duration at all. That's just one example. 
let's actually look into this. Okay. That's that's like the the greater explanation of how affliction works is you dive into an area, you it's a very dark area, you have to search around to get whatever you can. As you uncover more areas, you run you slowly run out of power to continue staying in those areas and over time uh you you basically you have to choose which parts of the map you want to uncover and then once you run out of power you get kicked back out so instead of a timer they went for a uh, limited ability which is kind of nice because that means that you can just kind of hang out and stand in a, one particular area and like fight monsters if you want and it won't cause you any issues you don't have to worry about your build being too slow because you have as much time as you want you just have to choose where you want to go with that time uh you with that you can collect wisps which have a variety of different effects and let's see I want to scroll down to the wisps where would those be Meta, Metamorph, other things. Atlas, Transfiguration, Skill Gems. Oh yeah, also there's a lot of changes to Skill Gems, both with the uh, both with the effect of uh, the Transfigured Gems and just in general. Okay, so they don't have a description of all the uh, what the Wisps do, but basically they can just have other... They can cause modifiers to uh, things in your map, as well as they can be used as currency to buy stuff, kind of like the harvest currency is. Uh, they have taken a bunch of things and thrown them into the core drop pool to make them more common. Uh, they've added a bunch of unique items, as well as more replica items and more experimented items. Uh, one of the biggest changes, going back to it, is going to be adding Ultimatum to replace Metamorph. So every section of the Metamorph Atlas passives will be swapped out for Ultimatum stuff. Uh, I don't dislike Ultimatum myself. I had the same problem with it that everyone else did, which was it was obnoxiously hard for very little loot. And it just was very punishing for no good reason. And hopefully, it is better now. It sounded like they understood what the problem was, whether they managed to actually implement the changes that were, would fix the problem, we don't know. But we will have to see. So... A lot of old Ultimatum content has come back. Uh, generally, anything that gave Metamorph rewards or relates to Metamorph was swapped out one-to-one -one for Ultimatum stuff. Metamorph Scarabs became Ultimatum Scarabs. Uh, Catalysts, are, which are the only parts of Metamorph that are kept, are now from Ultimatum. Uh, incubators from Metamorph are now are now ultimatum incubators. Basically, basically that's the main change. Okay. Scrolling downwards. So, Astral Projector, Fury Valve, Mother's Embrace, and Warrior's Legacy have been added to the core drop pool. Uh, I'm not as familiar with uh, the last two, but as for Astral Projector, it enables a lot of builds to exist on its own, so it's a very expensive unique usually. Adding it to the core drop pool means that it will drop more and its value will be a lot lower than before, which is good, because it's kind of needed to make certain builds exist. Its main function is so that Nova skills, which... Uh, radiate out from you when you cast the spell, instead appear at a particular location that you click on. Just that simple. And this will allow you to actually have these options now. 
because some builds did not start until you got your astral projector and with it being expensive that can be a problem scrolling down Other league changes. When Delirium Fog has ceased its movement due to players engaging other league content, walking out of the mist will no longer cause Delirium Fog to dissipate. Thank gosh! Okay, that's good. That means that we can actually enjoy other league content and pause the Deliriums if they're going. Uh, Forbidden Tomes will be reduced from Sanctum. Okay. More Relics reduced from Sanctum. Okay, don't really care too much because I don't play that. The Atlas maps have been juggled. No, I recognize this song. We're not doing that. Ah, going back to it. Basically, they just juggled everything that existed before. New uh, new bosses unlock new things in your pantheon. New maps ex existed that... Or new maps came back that were previously disabled. Previously functional maps are now disabled. Just same shift that you see every league. So, going to Transfigured Gems, which are the weird, weird part of this entire expansion, and are also why build crafting is going to be very hard for the next couple weeks. Uh, so they have removed alternate quality gems, so every alternate quality gem in any of the builds that I have, I need to remove uh, from the path of building because I'm not going to have access to them anymore. All the labyrinth enchantments, uh, it just says labyrinth helmet enchantments here, but it's actually all labyrinth enchantments, so boots, gloves, and belts are also going to be gone. So any anyone who is relying on a particular enchantment to help them with something. Those are gone now, so those have to be removed. And Threshold Jewels, which were not... They're not really a major thing these days, but basically they were a jewel that you'd socket into a passive tree, and they would change your a particular skill in a very notable way. They've been kind of being phased out for a while, and I think I've even said recently that like they don't really have a place anymore. It'd be nice to see if they could be moved somewhere else. And well, they've been moved somewhere else. So, Transfigured Gems now can be found in the Labyrinth. Which gives me a whole lot of interesting feelings, because I don't usually like the Labyrinth. <laughs> so... Instead of enchanting things at the end of the labyrinth, you instead have the ability to modify your jewels now. Or, sorry, not you're not your jewels, your gems now. Uh, so you can either change your, you can either transfigure your gems to change it to a, a new a new type of gem, or you can add quality, you can add experience, or you can even sacrifice your gems to open uh, more chests, for example. Just as a random example. Uh, this allows it so that more people who don't have access to, let's say, doing like powerful heists that have alternate quality gems now have access to these things just through doing the, la the normal lab, which also means that some very expensive things have now become a lot more reasonable to get. There also have been a lot of changes with damage dealing skills just in general past the transfigured gems and all of that. The quality stats, so the extra quality you can add to every gem, has been changed on pretty much every skill with the idea of making it more interesting. Uh, supports have had changes, but these changes to, to the active gems, specifically the damage dealing ones, is are the changes that are mainly being focused on. So, for example, um, what did they say? They were saying that, like, with a... If, if something was focused on... If a skill was focused on having long duration, then instead of having 20% uh, damage, or 10% damage, or 10% attack speed with the skill, they now just have... This vote increases the duration by a flat amount. Stuff that's more relevant to the actual main skill and less of a 
eh, if I have it, I have it. If I don't, I don't. Kind of thing. Uh, oh. The gem receive returning a level 20 gem into a 20% level 1 version of the gem no longer works with skill gems as the benefit quality provides to damage dealing skill gems is now more powerful. The vendor recipe will now only be used for non-awakened support gems. Okay, so that was the main method of getting quality gems before, besides adding uh, quality with gem cutters prisms. So I guess now because you can add the quality via the labyrinth, that they want you to do that more or just pay through gem cutters prisms. This means that GCP is going to go up in price a lot, probably, this coming league, as people are struggling to uh, deal with the new changes. Some people are probably going to be playing Labyrinth more, which might make it a lot cheaper to get gem cutters prisms, GCP. But it's hard to say. It, it really is, because being able to re-level a gem with quality was kind of an important thing before now. So, I don't know. That's, that's going to affect the economy a lot, and GCPs have been pretty expensive to begin with. So, hey, maybe if we're lucky, they'll be cheaper. That would be nice. This also means that certain builds that rely on all quality gems to function at all just do not exist anymore, or don't have the same power. So, the for example, Phantasmal Unearth, which increases the uh, life of the corpses that are spawned from unearthed, from unearth, or the corpses that are are unearthed, I should say. Uh, that enables a very large chunk of detonate dead and volatile dead skills skill builds to uh function well and do their upper end dps to big bosses well that's gone now so that's going to be interesting okay tainted blessings prime regretting lenses secondary regretting lenses are all going to be gone makes sense anything that adds uh, labyrinth enchantments has been temporarily disabled makes sense uh oh grand spectrum drills no longer drop from Izaro's treasure chest at the end of the labyrinth that's interesting they now drop from labyrinth troves and emperor's vaults found throughout the labyrinth okay so up to this point labyrinth troves and emperor's vaults have had absolutely no value they were valuable like five plus years ago, but at this point they've just degraded to the point that they're useless. Uh, now that actually means there's a reason to check them because you can get Grand Spectrums, and Grand Spectrums raise, range anywhere from 20 Chaos to uh, 2400 Chaos. I know, because I have three 10 div. Grand Spectrum Jewels on my bossing character. And at 240-ish chaos per div, it's expensive. <laughs> so if we're lucky, this will change how things work a bit with the Grand Spectrums, and hopefully they will be cheaper because they enable a bunch of builds that are very nice. Going through just all the things that they've removed to remove all the enchanted items from the game. Uh, Verici used to. It looks like Verici used to give uh, something relating to enchants in general. Sorry, I haven't read any of this yet because they, this literally just came out in the last 30 minutes. Uh, in order to place the rewards in Heist that previously gave alternate quality gems, we've done rebalancing of the rewards in Heist. Grand Heist no longer no longer differ based on type of blueprint area. Oh, so before there was two blueprint areas that offered uh, alternate quality gems. There was four that offered replicas, four that offered enchanted items. 
And no. Was it three, three, two, and one, maybe? I'm trying to remember. But the the point is that there's different specific areas that you just like you'd never see for example the the lab area, like the laboratory blueprint, if you just don't run a particular type of blueprint. Cause only certain ones were allowed were allowed to be a particular reward type. Now they've changed it up, which is gonna make grand heisting a bit more it's gonna make it less monotonous, which would be nice. Thief trinkets can now be unlocked when you first pick up a thief's tr thief trinket on the character rather than in a particular blueprint. Some of the more common but very low value currencies are no longer offered as rewards at the end of Grand Heist. Fucking thank you! Sometimes you'd be offered like eight orbs of chance and that's like half a chaos. That's, that's just worthless. I don't want to run a Grand Heist to get trash. Increased stacks of the currency is offered at the end of the Grand Heist. Okay, so the actual currency Grand Heist might be a lot more valuable now. Uh, endless Misery, Souls, Wick, and Spirit Guards. Unique jewels can no longer be obtained as benefits these provide are now found in the Transfigured Skill Gems. Okay. Uh, oh. Anima Stone, Unique Skill Gem, no longer has plus one to Golems. Golems should now be less dependent on this jewel to be effective, and instead have transfigured gems available to s that serve a similar purpose. Okay, so the Anima Stone specifically was a really, really big deal for every Golem build. If you have a Golem build, you have an Anima Stone. Just straight up. If there's not really a good reason to not have an Anima Stone, because it gives you another Golem. And anything that, if you're a minion build and something gives you more minions... It's probably the best option. If if you're a totem build, this thing gives you more totems. It's probably the best option. If if you're a projectile build and something gives you more projectiles, probably the best option still. <laughs> oh, Dead Reckoning has changed, which is the uh, skeleton mage gem or jewel, which is a big deal. Uh ha huh, ha huh, huh. Okay, so Dead Reckoning now lo no longer creates skeleton mages. So either the skeleton mage, uh, like the skeletonal mage builds, I've now just died completely, or they've become a transfigured gem, most likely a transfigured gem. Uh, the Dead Reckoning now offers uh, chaos damage to your skeletons based on your energy shield on your equipped shield. That's really weird. Be good for an Iron Mass build, though, which is almost purely chaos damage. Many experimented base types and some replica uniques have received changes. Yep. Transfigured gems are not detailed here. Yeah, so transfigured gems are going to be unveiled over time because basically they're going to create as many of them as they can, is, is what they said. They want to have at least one for every act of damaging skill, one transfiguration, with the ideal of there being two for every single act of skill. So we will see here what happens. So let's go through these skill gem changes, because this is where all the quality has been changed. This is going to be a pretty big deal, probably, because they made sure to... They made sure to fix up the problems the build, the skills tend to have and replace the flat damage with something more important. For example, Absolution now has increased cooldown recovery rate. Spawning minions is hard with Absolution. It takes time. That's important. Alchemist Mark now no longer has... Or, sorry. Now has Mark Effect instead of Area of Effect. That is like a lot of Marks. They already have effective mark. So that is just bring it in line with the others. Let's see. Sestra Cry gets more cooldown recovery. Ambush now gets more critical strike chance instead of cooldown recovery rate. So I guess that's more focused on it being like a important 
you hit something and you hit something with the intention to kill it more you hit it harder but less frequently i guess that makes sense because i mean you can only ambush someone so many times before they get wise to you <laughs> uh, ancestor protector they added melee strike range so it can hit farther instead of damage ancestor war chief now has increased activation range so it'll see things faster instead of increased damage uh, Animate Guardian. Let's see. Animate Guardian had some really weird stuff. So it now has more base life in general. And it doesn't have a huge dependency on... Uh... Oh, no, I'm re misreading that. So it has more base life in general... And they seems like they've decreased a lot of the, just removed a lot of the inherent uh, damage benefits that it has itself, and focused on it being more of something that can just survive, which I guess makes sense, considering that most people use Animate Guardian just as it has a bunch of gear on it that buff things that are nearby it and nothing else. It doesn't do damage itself. It's not a damaging skill. Technically, it does damage. But no one uses it as a main skill, unfortunately. So, yeah. Animate weapons, you now get plus two to maximum weapons instead of weapon movement speed. Sounds great. Arc. Uh, they increase the crit chance on arc. That's interesting. Uh, no longer has a chance to shock. No longer provides increased effect of lightning ailments. Okay, which would have given flat damage. Now it's 15% more damage with hits and ailments for each remaining chain. Uh, wait. That's the same, wait, that's the same as before. It now has 15% more damage with hits and ailments for each remaining chain. Previously more damage for each remaining chain. Oh! It now... It now gives more... Uh, it now shocks harder, basically. So they removed the flat shock effect, and they just made it so that it can shock harder. So your shocks will just scale a bit better now. Makes sense. Quality now causes chaining instead of a shock effect, or a chance to shock. That is so much better. That that makes the skill do a lot more damage. Increased buff effect on Arcane Cloak. Great. Uh... Armageddon Brand is now damage instead of cast speed. Artillery Ballista now adds more arrows instead of flat damage. I'm trying to think of a better way to go through this, because there's a lot of a lot of things to change. Let's see, I'm just going to go through and look at the ones that are more related to me, or ones that I think are interesting. Bear Trap has more duration, that's good. It locks people down, so that's kind of important. Berserk having more cooldown and recovery rates good. Blade Flurry was very weak before, having only 10% increased attack speed flat. This gives 5% more damage per stage. That's a really big buff to Blade Flurry. Uh, Blade Trap lasts longer, great. Blade Vortex... Uh, hits more often. Blade Fall drops more things. Okay, so it no longer decreases the amount of blades left on the ground if you trigger the skill. Which And these lingering blades are what's used to trigger things like Blade Blast itself. So being able to trigger Blade Fall me, is way more important, being that you need to have as many blades as possible to have a good Blade Blast build. Ooh, Blast Rain! That's a nice buff that added plus one to arrows. Each each projectile adds, like, 8% of the build worth of damage, so that's a big deal. Light is more duration. Ooh, Blink Arrow... So Blink Arrow has never been something I've been, like, too interested in. It is a travel skill that is meant to 
you fire an arrow at a particular spot and you appear there, and then your original spot, it creates a clone. It's always been kind of clunky and never been really sure of what it wanted to be. Now it is focused on cooldown recovery, which is exactly what you want for a travel skill. So that might actually make Blink Arrow a reasonable travel skill now. Plus, it's going to scale off of attack speed, which is really good because almost no travel skills scale off attack speed. Leaf Slam scales off attack speed, and that makes it stupid fast. That might actually make Blink Arrow an ideal, so, an ideal pick rather than dash on dexterity builds. Bone Offering has increased effect. Bone Shatter has more damage per trauma. That's a big deal. Burning Arrow has more damage with Ignites. That's a really big deal over increased damage. Caustic Arrow has more Radius. Chain Hook has a Rage effect, which is good because I believe Chain Hook has its own Rage issue. It like has its own rage needs. Uh, charge dash, cleave. Let's see. Cobra lash now chains more. That's always good. Consecrated path quality now causes the skill to deal up to ten percent more damage with hits to closer targets instead of providing AOE. That's great. That deals a lot more. That'll deal a lot more damage. And consecrated path is actually a very fun skill. So that. That actually sounds really fun. Especially considering I want to pick a new skill archetype for this league. I've been doing a lot of very spell-focused stuff, and I want to move away from that, at least for a league. Uh, Conversion Trap has more base duration. Contagion has more radius. Let's see. Oh, Cyclone now provides more movement speed instead of area of effect. Cyclone is very slow because it reduces your movement speed a lot, so having more quality would actually make a Cyclone build feel better now, which is great. Dark Pack's now going to hit a bit harder. Decoy Totem is going to have way more life. Ooh, Destructive Link has more duration. Detonate Dead... Uh... Has a 15% chance to detonate an additional corpse instead of providing cast speed. Yeah, cast speed wasn't a big deal for that, but the chance to detonate another corpse is a big deal. It's like having another projectile on a bow build. It it means it matters a lot. Okay. Ooh, discharge now has a chance to deal damage without removing charges. That's cool. Since that discharge's focus is on erasing charges, and it's hard to build the charges. Uh, Divine Ire looks like it's been buffed per stage. Dominating Blow has a high cooldown, so they added a cooldown recovery rate thing. That's great. That is way better than Minions deal increased damage. Uh, let's see. Elemental Hit, which is one of the, build, the builds I was looking into making, now does more damage per elemental ailment. That's very good. That also incentivizes you to use all three types of damage and not just one of them. Oh. Interestingly enough, they swapped out Elemental Weakness, so now it doesn't have Curse Effect. It has Duration of Elemental Ailments. That's going to change some things. Because Elemental Weakness was already pretty strong to begin with. Enduring Cry gets more cooldown recovery rate. Great. Energy Blade now has more maximum energy shield. Great. Explosive Arrow now has a ma more maximum arrow stuck in an enemy. Explosive Trap now has more explosions. Explosive Concoction now allows you to use it more because it has reduced flash charges used. I have Winter has more projectiles now. That's good. Because it scales well on projectiles, I believe.
Firestorm now has more radius instead of increased damage. Actually, I think I prefer that. Just because Firestorm tends to actually have a fairly small radius, surprisingly. With the speed that I cast it at, it tends to uh, do... It tends to kind of make up for that, but this will actually make it easier to map with, which is good. Uh, Flame Dash has been nerfed, because now the spell damage applies to Dot Multi. Oh wait, no, that's not a quality thing. Okay, no, so spell dam or Flame Dash has been buffed, so now that it do does more Dot effect. it They have not removed its cooldown recovery rate, thank gosh. I would have been sad. Flame Link has more base duration, that's good. I've been making a Flame Link build, and base duration is important. Ooh! The Flame Surge build we were playing just got a huge buff. Flame Wall has more maximum Flame Walls, that's a big deal. It only has like two to start with. Flicker Strike has a greater chance to gain a Frenzy Charge on hit. That's good. That will help make it so that people aren't required to have a Terminus Est sword every time to uh, make Flicker Strike viable. Ben Wright has extra projectiles. Frenzy has more attack speed and damage per Frenzy Charge. That's great. Frostblade has more projectiles instead of projectile speed. So Frostbomb has more cooldown reduction, but also I know from the stream, Frostbomb is getting a transfigured version that has no cooldown, but does less damage. So you can use it as a main damaging skill with the transfigured version now, which is actually incredibly exciting and might make it a very fun mine build if you want to run transfigured Frostbomb mines. Frostwall has more cooldown recovery rate. That's great. Frostblink has increased travel distance. That is very good. If you want to use Frostblink as a uh, actual travel skill versus just using it to freeze things. General's Cry. You can summon one more warrior. That's good. Did kind of like the cooldown reduction rate on General's Cry, though, so that's kind of sad. Uh, Glacial Cascade uh, quality now causes the final burst to do 50% more damage. That is a stupidly big buff. So Glacial Cascade is now stronger. Ooh, Heavy Strike now has chance to deal double damage instead of increased stun duration. That's a big deal. Herald of Ash is now more focused on its overkill damage from the explosion rather than just buffing fire damage flat, which probably means that I would be removing that from the Blaster Rain build completely, because I doubt it'll keep up anymore. Herald of Thunder has caused the storm to hit enemies with more frequency. Instead of increased lightning damage, that actually would be really good for Herald of Thunder specific builds. Holy Flame Totem has doubled the projectile speed. That uh, that does sound pretty good. It's not as big a buff as I would hope, but it's already a pretty strong skill. Uh, Ice Storm a little longer has less area of effect when cast on Frostbite. But no longer can expand from Frostbite, or sorry, Frostbolt. Okay, so I guess Ice Nova has been kind of separated from Frostbolt. Now that's honestly fine. I don't really, I've never really liked the two together, anyways, and I would kind of like to play Ice Nova on its own. Though to play Ice Nova, I would really want to have an Astral Projector going back to the start because then I can cast it where I want to cast it rather than casting it on me. Ice Spear now has crit multi instead of projectile speed. Oh, fuck. Okay, that's a big, 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 big increase, especially because Ice Spear has a huge crit chance to it. 
the this does raise another kind of worrying thing though uh with such a big buffed ice spear this probably means that rain of splinters the uh uh more projectiles to uh, uh totems but reduce totem damage is going to be more expensive and i really wanted that for the blast rain build so but i probably will have to remove rain of splinters from the build completely because i Unless it becomes more common, this is going to make it spike in price. Ice Trap has a chance to trigger again. That makes it way stronger. Icicle Mine has more projectiles. Makes it stronger. What else? Colonel Cry now has, has increased school armor recovery. Same with Intimidating Cry. Those are all great. Two of Link has more base duration. Great. It needs it very badly. Quality for stun, or for Leap Slam, now increases stun duration, rather than... Uh, stun duration against enemies on full life, instead of stun duration on enemies, just in general. I don't really see the point of that, because I don't think I've ever seen someone use Leap Slam for that ability. They just use it as a movement skill. But, I mean... Hey, for that one weirdo who wants to stun people with Leap Slam... Well, there you are. You can do it once. <laughs> Mirror Arrow looks like it's been changed kind of like Blink Arrow now, so that uh, it's more focused. Let's see. No longer has increased minion damage in life. now has percent more damage instead of increased damage. Mirror Arrow clones now have 75% more base damage and more life inherently. That's good. Quality now provides clone recovery rate rather than projectile speed for attacks and minions. Ugh. This might actually make Mirror Arrow worth looking into as like a build. Because, I mean, Miro sounds fun. Since it just creates clones of you and they attack for you. So you could have Mirror Arrow and Mirage Archer at the same time. With the Dead Eyes plus two to Mirage Archer. You could have three Mirage Archers and I think either two or three uh, Mirrored Archers too, which would be kind of cool. Oh, hello! Go oh, Gomez does memes. Oh, Go Gomez? I don't know how to pronounce your name. But hi! <laughs> I'm just going over in depth the different changes with the uh, Affliction League right now. Just kind of... Gomez, okay. Hi, Gomez. Welcome to the stream. Just going through like all the changes that I'm seeing to the different skills and what I think could be used of them to make new belts and how that will affect uh, the uh, economy in general. Because, like, Ice Spear, for example, just... Where is it? Just got a bunch more crit multi, which means I think Brain of Splinters is going to go up in price because that's already an expensive thing. What's your weird idea? Penance Brand has been significantly simplified. That actually sounds really good. Penance Brand, Energy Blade, Spell Blade with Inquisitor. Fair enough. Have you looked at the new Penance Brand changes? Is that, like, based on it? Or is that just before these changes because it looks like it's been oh, okay so it looks like it's a time detonation explosion i've never actually played with it before
What the fuck? It has an added da damage effectiveness of 570%? Holy shit, you're right. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be... something interesting. Okay, I see why you're saying Spellblade, or like Energy Blade and Spellblade support. Yeah, that's great! That's just like, full-on fucking Battle Mage would be awesome with this. Especially if you do a conversion build, you could do a fire conversion build using uh, uh, Murder of Innocence for Battle Mage, or you could just go for the Inquisitor's normal Battle Mage, as you were suggesting. That would work just as well. Plus, you could also Forbidden Flesh and Flame for some of the brand benefits that Hierophant has, too, which would be quite nice. Sounds fun. I would love to check out Pendant's brand at some point, and especially now that it's being buffed so much. I mean, 10% more damage with hits against branded enemies as the quality instead of 10% increased area effect, that's night and day. I'm not really a huge fan of skills that need to charge up, but... I don't know, it depends how long it takes for it to explode once it's been attached. It's one of the reasons why I've never used Exploding Arrow. It does look very fun, though. You, there's a whole lot of things you could do with that much added damage effectiveness. Oh. I guess moving on. That's interesting. So Power Siphon now fires projectiles at 4 to 7 nearby enemies instead of firing 4 to 7 additional projectiles. So it doesn't just fire projectiles if there's nothing there. It specifically seeks out things. That's cool. Oh, oh my gosh, I almost skipped over it. Poison Concoction afflicts Wither now. That's really good. That is really awesome. Oh, punishment can cause debilitate. Oh, that's a that is so much better than curse effect. Like it'll shave off a little bit of damage, but you're gonna have a bunch more protection now, and that's debilitate is like a really really good. It's a really good thing to have. I believe it adds a ten percent. I think it adds a 10% less damage multiplier to uh, uh, any monster that's attacking you. Or maybe it's 10% reduced. Can't remember. Oh, nice to see more damage on Purifying Flame. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Hold on a second. Did they remove area of effect from a bunch of Oh no, they removed area of effect from a bunch of aura skills. Oh. Oh no, that's gonna like that's gonna be really painful for aura bots to actually do anything with, because you kinda needed that. That's just going to make it more obnoxious to play an aura bot, unless they've increased aura's size in general. Because, like, there is an area of effect modifier you can get from the mastery, but... Hold on a second. I'm going to go... I'm just going to check here. Uh, do they have a passive tree? I'm going to see if they changed the mastery at all. Oh. No, they didn't change the mastery. Okay, that's weird. So we're just gonna have less. So we're just gonna have less AOE on our aura skills. That's weird, and unfortunate. 
Maybe it wasn't that required? Hmm. I'm unsure why they made this change. It honestly confuses me a bit. Ooh, Ray Spectre now has increased element resistances. That's good. That'll bring it up to a 60% all res, rather than 40%. Zombies no longer have their slam. They have more life. Oh, the quality adds another zombie. That's a big fucking damage boost. I think try more cooldown reduction. Great. Honestly, I'm I'm really looking at Ray Zombie with the Transfiguration right now because there is the fall like it has the falling from the sky zombie as its uh, <laughs> as its transfigured version that causes just like a big splat explosion, and that sounds really fun. It's like a physical firestorm. Okay, Reckoning has had cooldown recovery rate added to it. That'll totally make it a useful, viable skill now. After all, the only problem with Reckoning is the cooldown. Not the fact that it doesn't do any damage, or that its trigger is a pain in the ass to get. <sighs> oh, what did they do to Righteous Fire? Oh. They removed the flat damage, and it now does more damage. It does double the damage based on your maximum life and your shield, so it focuses more on you powering up your life and energy shield than it does on just its own stuff. So basically, Righteous Fire now needs more investment. It also adds more radius, which will make it better for mapping. Okay, fair. Repost! Oh yes, cooldown recovery, because repost is definitely going to be better with cooldown recovery. I mean, it will be, but like... It's the, sa it's the same as Vengeance, like, what do you... <laughs> or Reckoning, like, <laughs> they're counter skills, they're not going to be used. Uh, Scorching Ray has increased damage, that's good, it's still not used, I would like to use it one day, maybe. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Searing Bond can have more totems. Good, because it doesn't deal much damage already. Asma Cry has more quill on recovery. Seismic Trap has more waves. Whoa. They removed Steel Shards from Shattering Steel? If you have no Steel Shards, only fires one projectile. Projectiles deal up to 50% more damage with hits per steel shard. Oh. That actually makes this way more usable, because sometimes you would run out of steel shards from just running out of impale like things in that are impaled, and that would cause you to just not be able to attack when you need to. So having it function without any steel shards at base, like just base, it has a projectile. That is a very good usability change for having shattering steel as a main skill. Okay, shield crush, more damage to hit targets that are close. Good. Uh, I would love to use shield crush as a build one day. Capital Ballista has increased projectile speed. I don't see why that would benefit in any way, but sure, go ahead. Siege Ballista has increased attack speed per totem instead of projectile damage. I guess that's better. It's still probably not going to get played. Uh, Sigil of Power now has enemies de in area deal less damage while at maximum stages. That's actually really good if you want Sigil of Power as more of a defensive thing. Smite now does more area damage instead of area effect. Yeah, I don't think it really needed the area damage. I think I think that or the area effect. That's that's probably a good change. Smoke mine now grants increased movement speed instead of area effect. Thank gosh, smoke mine might actually not be trash now after its nerf, because the last nerf was soul sucking. <laughs>
Spark fires more projectiles. Great. Spectral helix. More damage based on things that's pierced. Spectral shield throw. More projectiles. Spectral throw. More damage based on pierced. Spell slinger. Now causes supported spells to have added spell damage equal to 20% of damage of equipped wand. Two ones are equipped. Each contributes half as much added damage. Probably no longer causes sword skills to deal 20% increased damage. Okay. I think that's a good change. That might make it Spell Slinger a bit more relevant. Unfortunately, you still have to use a wand attack skill, which sucks. But, I mean, it's something. Oh, more arrows for Split Arrow. Great. Splitting Steel no longer consumes shards. Steel shards or grants Call of Steel. Increased chance to impale. Attack speed multiplier, 90% of base. Okay, so Splitting Steel is now just a impale skill. It doesn't matter. The steel shards don't seem to matter. Okay. Unless it just means that it's the exact same as the shattering steel, which just you can just attack even without shards. That's an option. Stormbrand has more beams. That's good for mapping. Uh, let's see what else. Ooh, Stormblast is going to be a bit stronger at its base, but weaker in the late game. That actually is probably going to be really good, because if you do a two-link in Act 1 with added lightning damage, that actually might make this a very good skill to level up with at the start. So that actually, it's really nice, because I like opening with Storm Blast Mines at the start of the league. So that's going to be fun. No worry, Gomez. Lots of time. Okay. Golems no longer have increased max maximum life. They just have more life inherently. Fine, fine with me? Oh, increased buff effect for its quality instead of increased damage. I like that. That's going to make you a lot more durable in general. That's actually really, really good because, like, I would want an alt quality chaos golem a lot of the time just so I could get increased buff effect. So that actually is a big deal to me. Especially for adding golems to non golem answer builds. Raging Spirit no longer has more... Minions deal more damage. Instead, Raging Spirit's melee attack now naturally gains its damage scaling with levels. Chance to spawn an extra minion with quality. Hmm. This effectively tells us nothing. So they remove a stat, and then they... They basically just rolled that stat in with the Raging Spirit's ability itself. Which, if anything, hides the stat increases more? So that actually makes it less understandable just at a glance, looking at the skill, probably. Hmm. I don't know if I like that change. Not that I really care about SRS, but... Eh. I care about all the skills in a one way or another. Ooh, Summon Reapers have more damage! And they do more bleeding! That's good, it only has 50% chance to bleed by default, so it brings it up to 70. And that makes a Reaper build focused on bleed a bit more reasonable. So I've always wanted to do a Reaper build that's just Reapers. More skeletons. 
staff effect. Uh -huh. Now provides buff. Debuffs on you expire 20% faster. Hmm. I don't understand Temporal Rift and how it works, really. Like, I've never played with it, because it seems so weird. So I have a hard... I can't really comment on how that works. Tornado shot. People are going to be really happy with the additional projectile. Oh my gosh! Corpses spawned have increased max life from Unearth now. Okay, so that 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 was the function of Unearth was to was to spawn better corpses, and without Phantasmal, we were going to suffer. But that actually might even be a buff to Unearth and detonate dead builds. You mark a position and go back to it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I understand like the basic concept of how it works, but I don't understand how to use it in practice. <laughs> it's just a lack of familiarity and skill with it, honestly. If I spent more time with it, I would have a better concept. It's as simple as that. But this... Hold on a second. I need to, I need to look into this now. Uh... Trade. Hold on. I'm gonna open the trade site really quickly. Uh, I'm not gonna open the trade site really quickly. Apparently. Uh, Pewee Ninja. Okay. How much is a phantasmal? Or not? How much? What is the effect? The specific stats of a phantasmal? on Earth right now. Specific stats of a 2020 are that it has... Oh my gosh! It's a, it's a buff! Because it gave you a 22% increase to max life for your corpses. And now this is just going to give you a 30% increase flat. That's really good. It now fulfills its purpose even better than before. And now it's not going to be obscenely expensive to get it. Because... On Earth is expensive. <laughs> vengeance triggers more. I'm sure that's great if you use vengeance. Does no one? Vigilant strike, more attack damage, more endurance charge, void sphere. Ooh, more cool and recover on void sphere. I love that. I love that because I like void sphere and cast when stunned. It's a good way of distracting the enemy. Ooh, Volatile Dead with more orb movement speed. That's really nice. Because you can only have a set number of orbs. It's really easy to create the orbs. And they don't necessarily move fast enough to get them off the screen. Because you want to cycle your orbs as fast as possible. So that an orb comes into existence... It shoots towards an enemy, it hits it, explodes, and then you can now use that slot of, like, the 1 of 50 that was used up before. So this means that your DPS can actually be higher at the upper end if you find yourself hitting the orb limit. Not sure how many people actually have found themselves at the upper end, but it's there. Oh, they did some stuff to Vortex. Vortex no longer has a cooldown. Can't be cast and project on frostbolt bolt projectiles. He has a bit more damage at level 1. Uh, deals a lot less damage at level 20. Aw. Actually, that might not matter. Because I would love to do Vortex Mines. That sounds really fun. I mean, you can't do it right now, but, like, overlapping vortexes will be fun. Which brings me to a different question. Uh, vortex. 
What I'm wondering is... Oh, I should have gone and hit the wiki. So for Vortex, is there a maximum number of Vortexes that can exist? I don't think there is. Which means you could just fucking demolish a boss with a horde of vortexes from, like, uh, blast chain slash... Or, sorry, hi, vortex high-impact mines minefield would just be a horde of vortexes, and that sounds fucking amazing. I cannot wait to play with that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> New duration for Wave Conviction. Ooh. Ooh, 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 whoa, whoa. That is a big, big damage buff to Wave of Conviction. But the biggest problem with Wave of Conviction, I find, is that it doesn't have enough AoE. But, I don't know. I've considered Wave of Conviction totems, but... I feel like it needs to be really close to things to hit them. It has like an even bigger problem with that than Flame Surge, and Flame Surge has a big problem with that. Huh. No, my elusive effect has been gotten rid of. <laughs> I used to use Withering Step on a cast when stunned, and to have extra elusive. Ah. Wait, no, I didn't use this. I was using Weathering Step, but I was using the uh, chance to not lose the buff when you use a skill. No, I'm going to lose that instead! That's so powerful! I had like a 45% chance not to lose the buff. Or 44% chance not to lose the buff with a uh, 20... Uh, 2020 uh, Divergent Weathering Step. Uh, with an enhanced support. Oh, that was so good. Well, time to find Elusive elsewhere. Fall skills have changed a bit. I don't know what they're going to do with fall skills, I'll be honest. Because, like, it kind of feels like an alternate quality in itself, but because it's added, it's tacked onto a gem that already exists, it's going to... They can't, like, split it off from that gem, I feel like, without it be just, like, losing all use. They have stated that, regardless whether you transfigure a gem or not, a Vol Arc, trans uh, whether it's a transfigured arc or a normal arc, the Vol Arc is Vol Arc. It will not change. It is the exact same Vol Arc that we've had before. Just with the new quality. That's a bit sad. I like I liked having area of effect for the wither debuffs. Uh, more damage with ignites over fire dot multi. That might be better. I'm not sure. Hmm. Hmm. That. is a nerf, I think, effectively. With the normal detonate dead, that's a big buff. But because you already, you're already you already going to blow up like 20 corpses in a row, having 20% area damage on all, every, tw every one of those 20 corpses is probably a bigger deal than having 21 corpses. For example. Because detonate, vault detonate dead just goes till you run out of corpses anyways. You're going to get more radius for fire of all fireball. That's cool. Having a big fireball would be kind of nice. Radius would be was cool. I, I wonder what that's going to look like. I'll probably want to use that to see because like fireball is very underwhelming to start with, but I would love to make fireball into a decent thing.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is just more or less the same stuff as what we saw up there, but but it is just tacked onto the vol skills. I don't think they gave a huge amount of thought to the vol skills. Besides, it stays here; it does not change. <laughs> okay, sport gem changes. Extra targets for supported skills can be found further away. Okay, so that's a good reason to use Ancestral Call Support rather than just adding more more targets to your strike. Because that will actually extend your range a bit more. That's good. That's much better than melee damage. No! They decreased my totem placement speed! Why? It already sucked! Well, I mean, it felt like it sucked. I don't know. That That's that's sad. I don't think it's a big deal, but it's sad. Uh, that is a huge nerf. Blast Chain Mind was way better with uh, Mind Throwing Speed. Holy now causes the skill to have 10% reduced amount of damage taken to trigger. Ooh, oh my gosh. It was never, there was never a point having a ca the quality on cast when damage taken. But now, oh my gosh, that's such a big deal. I want that. Yeah, that's, that's the alternate quality that they picked instead of the main quality. And the alternate quality was the ideal quality. That's perfect. Okay, they took the alt quality for Culling Strike as well. Because, I mean, I almost... If I picked Culling Strike, I never got quality on it. It was never worth it. But recovering 2% of life when you cull an enemy? Eh? I mean, if that's on a golem, if a golem calls something that's 2% of its life back, it has like 20,000 life. Like, golem life is pretty high, so that would be really big on a minion. So that actually would be a decent reason to have that. It's not a big change, but it's it's something. Koino causes sported skills to deal 80% increased damage if you consumed a corpse recently. Okay. So Devour support is going to be a lot better for things like Detonate Dead or Volatile Dead, or maybe even on minions if you're using Offering skills a lot. Hold on. Devour support. Killing blows support skills consume corpses. Okay. I don't know if that's if this is enough to justify putting this on something as a damaging support gem. But that's cool. That is that is that has some potential. That's some potential. Oh, what are you thinking? What's your idea? Because honestly, like, this might actually be a decent, like, just, just forgetting about the new quality, this might be decent just to add to a random skill that you have. Oh, Devour and Culling Strike support together on a Golem or something, that sounds nice. Just me looking to create, like, a defensive golem. Just, like, Chaos Golem with a new increased buff effect. Devour support. Killing Strike support to get the Killing Blow. Uh, 
meat shield support to give it less damage and some physical damage reduction and the ability to taunt to, to protect you more. Hmm. Any which self-cast build, devour support with for forbidden flesh and flames, necro, cast speed per corpse consumed. Huh. Interesting. Actually, this 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 is another question here that is very 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 important to this. It says consumes corpses, not consumes a corpse. How many corpses does this consume? Just any of them nearby? Because if no, it doesn't. It's quite possible that it's it. it here, there's two possibilities. Either it has internal cooldown that it hasn't mentioned, which is very GGG, uh, to just have in, internal cooldown it doesn't mention, or B, they're expecting you to not be able to kill things often enough, and have corpses often enough. So it's possible that we could exploit that, as you pointed out. I'm wondering... Hmm. Oh my gosh, okay. Very, very stupid idea here forming. Okay, okay, very stupid idea here forming. Uh, let me just open a random POB so I can kind of assemble this. Some sort of melee skill. I'm going to put in Smite, because I like Smite, just as a random thing. Then we're going to add... Cast on melee kill. Then we're going to add devour. Wait, what was I going to add to cast on melee? I was going to going to add something to that. Um shit. Yes, yes, okay. Cast on melee. Desecrate. Devour support. <laughs> hmm. You could even throw in a culling strike to make sure that you're getting the killing blows. But what you could do is you could just throw in a writhing jar then. So you writhing jar with smite to kill a bunch of shit. It casts on melee, which casts desecrate. You get a killing blow, so it devours. You have something with Battle Mage on it. Um, I'll just throw a Martyr of Innocence in here, because why not? And then... Oh, no. Throw that in, and then you add... Uh, let's say you make an Elementalist, and then you... Forbidden Flesh and Flame the... Necros, where was it? Corpse Pact. For attack and cast speed. You can make a melee build that does that. Of course, this has like a whole lot of complicated conditions, but like... Hmm. <laughs> Bone Shatter Witch! <laughs> Oh, that sounds fun. Bone Shatter, Cast On, Melee, Kill, Desecrate, Devour. Uh, wait. Uh, oh! Behead! Behead! To steal modifiers. And then culling strike just to make sure you get a kill. Oh, that sounds like a grossly complicated thing. <laughs> and you could go like full spell damage since you have the battle mage. 
and can just, like, pump it, or not spell damage, you can go full, um, no, fuck, fuck behead. We're gonna add, uh, spell blade support to this instead. For some extra damage to double up. This is a stupid idea. <laughs> it sounds really fun, though. But even if you just had this as a four link, you could just use this. Okay, I'm going to take off the Bone Shatter for a second. I'm going to put back Smite. Uh, is the teeny tiny little problem that you have no damage. Because <laughs> that's a teeny tiny problem that we definitely have. Because you could totally use Smite for this just to, like, give life recovery, and then you could have your actual six link that's like, oh, this is your bone shatter with your melee physical damage support and your multi-strike and your... Inevitable brutality. Wait, no, not brutality, because we have fire. So added fire damage support. Nope, that's lightning. Added fire damage support. You know that type of shit. Are we sending enough HP to handle trauma stacks? No fucking idea. Given why attack speed equals more trauma stacks equals more damage taken. Yeah, there's that. That is a good point. <laughs> uh, so funny thing. Uh, fuck being an elementalist completely. So we're a necro now. <laughs> The, uh, the, <laughs> the trauma does physical damage, if I remember correctly, uh, bone armor. So, you could take mindless aggression, take bone armor, uh, take Plaguebringer and Corpse Pact, then you could grab, uh, uh over here, spiritual aid for minion damage also affects you. Because this would help you actually pop, like, manage your physical damage reduction, but you need to have minions of some sort. So maybe some sort of cast one damage taken skeleton setup, or... Someone raiding spirits or something. Because you can also get more life recovery with that too, so your life regen would be better. By the five second mark, we'll be taking over 80,000 damage per hit, around something million damage a second, so good luck. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I've never. I've, I'll, I'll admit, I've never actually figured out how to fucking do that. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on a second. Actually, no, I do have an idea. I have an idea. Um. If I can explain it properly. No, 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 no. Do you, do you need to take damage? Or do you just take damage incidentally? You don't need to take it. You take it incidentally. Okay. Okay, so here, here is my thought. Chaos inoculation. Physical damage taken to chaos damage. Sent to your chaos to your chaos inoculation to make you immune. So you are immune to the physical damage taken from the bone shatter. And then you go full ES build with uh, essence glutton for the corpses nearby and regenerating energy shield for the corpses consumed.
By the time specking damage doesn't matter because Bone Shatter has a 400,000 base flat at. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of flat added physical damage, 400k. Uh, yeah. How many people do you think have done an enter a chaos inoculation bone shatter witch? <laughs> Sorry, a chaos inoculation bone shatter necromancer. See, Shroud of the Lightless got nerfed very badly. I don't think shade form exists anymore. No, it exists. Hmm. Is this is this right? This doesn't look right. Is that the active version? Hmm. Clone doesn't drop one shade form. Yeah, okay. I wasn't actually thinking of going through that. There's... I'm struggling to think of it right now, but there are ways to convert all of your phys all the physical damage you take to chaos damage. Like, I know... I know one simple one is physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage. You can get that out of the energy shield mastery, but that's only 10%. Let's take off Martyr of Innocence for a second. Where is my Nictus Lantern? There we are. Uh, and then I'm going to add just just a random shield. Uh, sure, let's take the Aegis Aurora. Corrupt. Physical damage is chaos damage, so you could get up to 8%. That's 18% of your physical damage is chaos damage. Uh, just with ed just corrupting any shield. It doesn't matter whether it's rare or whatever. Uh, I swear. Oh. Apparently, this bow adds 25% of physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage, but I don't really want to wear have a bow. <laughs> this allows you to have your some elemental damage take uh, from hits taken as chaos damage, so that would be kind of nice, I guess, if we're converting everything to chaos damage anyways. Okay, that's just a random... Hmm. This does confer 10% more, but that's not very much. Hmm. Isn't there a Thomas Duel that converts Fizz taken to fire? Uh, there's one that converts cold and... Or Converts two elements to another. Yeah, I'm wondering... Okay, hold on a second. Uh, timeless. Brutal Restraint. Uh, Dance with Death, Second Sight, Traitor. No, don't... Oh, I forget what Dance with Death is. I'll just the bill quickly. Carry one. Okay, that's definitely not it. Carry one, carry one. I forget which one's the carry one. Lethal Pride. Lethal Pride is... No, okay, hold on. That gives you Chain Break or any of the other one. Um... Tempered by War is uh, elemental, though. I think. Cold and Lightning Damage is taken as Fire Damage. 
So that doesn't really help if this is if tempered by war is the one you meant. Is conversion. I think correct me if I'm wrong. If I just get a normal rare helmet with warlord influence. You know, physical damage taken is fire damage. But that's not really helpful. Wait, is there a hunter one? For physical, it's chaos? Mm. Looks like a no. Wait, what was that? No, it's the no. I don't believe for a second that this is all we have. I... I know we have more somewhere. Okay, well, I'll get a cheat for a second and just add two replica insperries, which is 10 and 10 with 20%, and then we have. I've already forgotten how we're doing this. Uh, 20%, 30% conversion, but that's not nearly good enough. Okay, this is a stupid concept, but can you can we make all physical damage crit us? Because <laughs> if we can make all physical damage crit us, it's a simple thing to uh, reduce... No, that's just reduce extra damage. It doesn't reduce all damage. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Uh... Part of my brain just keeps trying to put in Tainted Pact to this, which is chaos damage over time heals you while you're leeching, but that's not really what I'm looking for. Hmm. I feel like there's something. I feel like there's something somewhere. Oh, do you, you have an idea? Also, just as a side note, this is my favorite part of Path of Exile, <laughs> is doing that. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Am I... Am I silly? No, I'm not. Okay, good, I got that. Just applied the Joseph's treatment. Ah, so we're doing something stupid, then. What? Is this one of those you convert A to B and convert B to C and C to D? Because that would not surprise me as a as something you can do. Uh, Spellcast loop with Tainted Pact. Uh, not following. Oh. Oh, you mean like Forbidden Rite or something? Like Forbidden Rite Spellcast Loop with Tainted Pact? Hmm. Oh, does Bone Shatter need... Okay, well, that's not going to work if Bone Shatter needs, like, a scepter or something. Okay, Bone Shatter can use that. I'm going to pile up the trauma stacks a little bit. Just add, like, 50 trauma stacks. Is there some way we can tell how much damage we'd be taking? I'm not. I don't have the most familiarity with uh, trauma. Like I don't have have the most familiarity with bone shatter. So 
I'm not actually sure how to tell, because I, I noticed that there's nothing popping up for degen here. I don't really know how the heck that would work. Because, I mean, with... with you taking, like, 10,000 damage a hit with even just 50 trauma. I guess the other option is we siphon off 18% of physical damage as chaos, I guess. And then we build... Uh, Just tons of physical damage reduction and like try to push it to 90, I guess. Because so we take 10,000 damage and we reduce that by 90%, then we take an amount of number th or an amount that I do not, I'm not able to process. Uh, we take a thousand then. That's still an obscene amount. We'd have to, like, that has to be mitigated somehow. Hmm. Wait, hold on. Hold on, I have something stupid. Um... Uh, no, not Aspect of Stone. Um... Where is it? Persistence. We're in the thousands? Uh. So does it does trauma hit you? <laughs> this this is such a weird conversation if you're not familiar with this game. Just hearing just hearing that sentence. But I'm just wondering if persistence would help. Because if you... Okay, does it count as one hit or a ton of hits? Because if it counts as a ton of hits, persistence would be able to reduce it a lot. If it counts as one hit, persistence is useless. Okay, persistence is useless. So we would need a percent, basically, to reduce it by... I really want to siphon it off and, like, convert all of the physical damage to chaos. I mean, converting physical to chaos isn't that hard. At least it shouldn't be. I don't know. This is going to take a lot more thinking, I think. <laughs> Just to, like, come up with something that is basic. In any case, though, just, like, the simple melee skill, uh, just being able to, uh, uh, writhing jar into, into desecrate, into devour would be kind of cool. The dumb brand idea? You mean, uh... You mean, like, the penance brand one? Yeah. That would be easier to flesh out, I agree.
Where's the fourth node? There's always like four ish of each type. What am I missing? Oh, it's all of them. Uh, there was more. Map strength and end stacking is always good. I guess for that, I probably would want to chop off fanaticism and add the righteous providence specifically. Hmm. Oh, I don't actually. Why the heck am I even reading what this does? Because none of this is accurate anymore. I have to go back up to Penance Brand. What does Penance Brand do again? Yeah, the new version. Penance Brand has been simplified. It no longer spreads en energy to nearby enemies or causes. For regular pulses. Immediately explodes when it reaches maximum energy. Uh, no longer has an attached duration. Instead, it remains attached to the enemy until it reaches maximum energy. Then it expires immediately after once the explosion occurs. It no longer gains damage or radius per energy. Hmm. Okay, so, yes, Inquisitor. I do understand why Inquisitor is good. Inquisitor is great, which is why it's in it's every build. Uh, counterpoint. Gla Duelist Gladiator Penance Brand. Or, wait, Gladiator? I think it's Gladiator. Um, where is it? More physical damage while at maximum frenzy charges. That's not what I'm looking for. It's ignore enemy f monster physical damage reduction if you blocked in the past 20 seconds. Yeah. I'm very curious, though, what, uh, like... Outmatch and Outlast, Violent Retaliation, Pain Forged, and... I guess you could go for Blood in the Eyes for Maim. But you'd have to Maim somewhere, some other way, because you wouldn't be Maiming with an attack. But so then you wouldn't need any physical damage reduction. <laughs> then we just uh, add a uh, Nikta's Lantern. <laughs> Maybe add a shield to that of some sort. I really like to pick up things like... I really like to pick ascendancies that are a bit weird, because Inquisitor is a really obvious choice, and I would love to play with the Violent Retaliation with just being able to overwhelm all physical damage reduction just in, in it, just at all. Plus, Scaling Block is good for your, your protection. Yeah, we would. I'm just trying so, so hard to get away from... <laughs> to get away from Templar for everything. Because I swear, I play nothing but Templar. <laughs> oh. I don't know if it's a good idea to go all the fucking way down to a duelist. To the duelist area, just to get the ability to ignore physical damage reduction. But... I mean, who knows? I mean, actually, doesn't Violent Retaliation have 
Doesn't that have a version that exists? Yeah, you could go Scion instead. Oh my gosh, you could go... No, not Tellar. You could go Scion, Ascendant, Gladiator, and then either Templar or... Wait. Oh, you could go Hierophant for extra. Hmm. Champion Smite, Wrath on the plus 7, or a level boot. <laughs> yeah, that could work too. Wait, hold on a second. Oh, okay, so I missed something very like crucial to this, which is the converts to lightning damage <laughs> i thought this was a purely physical skill which is why i was like yeah a uh, champion but if this half is converted to lightning damage then yeah there's absolutely no point in me going all the fucking way down there yeah hmm you know what let that stew in your brain for a moment. Uh, we're going to go on a five-minute intermission, and then let's regroup and see what we can come up with. Also, I do want to go over the uh, rest of the patch notes, too, just because, you know, I want to be able to do it completely. Because there's also a lot of things in here, and these patch notes are what help me determine what type of builds I want to make. So... Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go on just a five-bit intermission, and then we'll be back. See you guys very soon. And by guys, I mean people.
And we're back. Okay. Hi, Han. We're just finishing going over the patch notes for the new expansion for Path of Exile. And I do want to get back to that. We can we can talk more uh, Pan and Spran later, Gomez. I do, I do, I'm very interested in what you're saying, though, because it is a really cool concept, especially with the, uh, especially with uh, Wrath with, um, I think it's Skyforth is the boots that have the plus seven. Also, you have to roll plus seven, so it's a bit more expensive to get that because it'd be max rolled. Any case, though, support gem changes. I want to just go over these again. Or not again, but I want to go over some of them. Oh, it's March of the Legion. Okay. I thought March of the Legion had a generosity on it. Or am I confused? Actually, I can just check. Oh, Divine Blessing. So it would only have some uptime. I haven't actually used Divine Blessing much yet. And by I haven't used it much, I mean I haven't used it at all. <laughs> okay, going back to it, though. I do want to go over the support gem changes. So, support gems. I've already gone over some of this. With the uh, ancestral call being a bit better because you can hit things farther away versus just adding extra strike targets like you can with masteries and such. Uh, it's a bit sad that Ballista Totems have. Ballista Totem support has lost a bit of its totem placement speed, but whatever. Scrolling down. They took the best of the Castle Damage Taken supports. Oh, uh, well, I think it was the anomalous one. Reduce amount of damage taken to trigger. Way better than increased damage. Culling Strike now gives 2% of life uh, once board skills cull an enemy, which I think I was saying before is probably really good with minions specifically, because they have high life pools. The flame looks like flame wood support has added increased totem life. That's actually really, really valuable. In some ways, that actually might make flame wood support worth having just for the totem life. Hmm. Frigid bond support has more duration. That's really good. I want to get into trying frigid bond. It's uh. It basically adds damage to link skills, which seems kind of cool. High Impact Mines has been nerfed, because mine throwing speed was really good. It's sad that that is dropped off, because that's going to be a lot less... This is going to be more clunky to play now. Ooh, Hypothermia gives a higher chance to freeze chilled enemies. That's good. Ice Spike gives more damage with Frenzy Charges. Eternal Legion now causes minions to deal increased damage instead of re taking reduced fire damage. That's actually kind of sad in general, but I don't know how I, I don't know how I feel about that because like I can see a benefit for a lot of I can see benefits on both sides because Blessed Rebirth minions don't take damage if they were cratered in the last four seconds can make it so that you can use Infernal Legion with uh, Summon Righteous... No. Summon Raging Spirits. So you wouldn't need the reduced fire damage. And if you use Infernal Legion with Skitterbots like I have for the for the Flame Surge totem builds, you certainly don't need that because they can't take damage. But they also can't deal damage, so it doesn't really matter still.
Ooh, Inspiration Support has reduced mana cost. That was the most expensive, I think, of all of the alt qualities for Inspiration Support. I think it was the Divergent one. Life Tap lasts for longer. Good. Uh, Maim lasts for longer. That was fine. Uh, Minions take less damage instead of uh, have additional physical damage reduction. That's really good for, for Meat Shield support. Oh, Mine Field support also got nerfed with, in, with decreased Mine Throwing speed. That means that my bossing build now has 25% less mine throwing speed. Or 25% decrease, technically. That's really sad. Minion life support now has more minion life on it. I guess that's good. It's... I need more reasons to justify using minion life support when minion damage support's so good. Multi-strike was going to be better for elemental skills now. Quality on sports skills to have a chance to gain power charge on crit instead of 20% increased real strike chance. That was the main... I used to use power charge on crit just for... Just as like a level 1 20% quality gem, because it was really good for that. This kind of kills that reason. But I imagine they don't want you to be using gems at level 1 in, like, in your damaging skills anyways, so... Whatever. They decreased the spell, the totem placement speed for spell totem support. Don't think that actually matters too much because when you have spell totem support, usually you're up there when the in the Templar air and lots of totem placement speed up there. Ooh, Swift Brand got a big buff. Oh, Gomez, Swift Brand support, five percent more activation frequency instead of five percent increased activation in frequency. That might. I don't actually know how that would work with uh, Penance Brand, but I would assume it would make it activate faster? Like, explode faster? Maybe? Or maybe it would scale up higher? No, I th no it's probably not like Dalt Multi. It probably would just make it scale faster. Or it wouldn't work at all. I'm not sure. I would like to see how Swift Brand support would work. Increase the damage buff from Volley. Faster activation makes it back faster to 20. Yeah, I. that's a really big deal for all, all brand skills. This might be a good league for brands, definitely. This is certainly going to make quality... I, I feel like, just based on everything I've seen so far, the amount of everyone is going to want quality on their gems. It's going to be so much bigger a deal than it used to be. So, I I am really worried for how much gem cutters prisms are going to cost this league. It like they're probably trying to incentivize you to like run the lab a bunch so you can like add quality to your gems and stuff with uh, the divine font at the end. Okay, let's move on to some other options. Miscellaneous gem changes. Data description on for stats on gems that provide increased boom speed to minions. To clarify, it does not affect other minions. Okay. Many skill gems now display the total number of projectiles or arrows they fire instead of how many additional ones. Thank you. That is good for clarity. Many skill gems now display their radius in meters in the gem description. Thank you. Spell Echo and Awaken Spell Echo no longer support blink skills. Is that... Would that even be good? I, I guess people must have been using it if if they're bringing it up. Eh, okay, whatever.
Uh, so one of the chieftain ascendancies. Oh, so there was a 5% chance for enemies to explode into 500% of their life as fire damage. Now it's um, it's you and your totems, not just you. That's a good change for a ascendancy that they seem to want to incentivize uh, ancestor totems to be a part of. Passive tree mastery stats that previously granted increased accuracy against marked enemies, unique enemies, or unique or nearby enemies now grant more accuracy. Okay, that's fair. Uh, could generate incorrect accuracy values under some circumstances. I don't really find these useful because I feel like if we're you're gonna be able to hit, like you want good accuracy against all creatures. I feel like I feel like it's better to just have good accuracy in general. And not just against specific enemies. But maybe that's me. With Speaker of the Dead Keystone, players can now touch up to 20 nor nearby normal and magic enemies for each tormented spirit, possessing them previously 50. This this keystone barely works as we found out during shifting stones. I really would like them to fix that. <laughs> oh, it's dangerous to have more, yeah. Yeah, I mean that is true and we have uh what's it called? Isn't uh precise technique no, precise technique is probably not that good. Never mind, that doesn't relate. Cool. Unique balance. Ashes of the Stars no longer provides increased reservation efficiency. <laughs> Existing items can be updated with a divine orb and a momentary lapse in judgment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you want to fuck up you can divine orb this and lose both the divine orb and one of your main stats uh heat shiver has been nerfed it's almost like that was really good before it was very good before Purple Dragon Fang's Flight now is less all res, less reservation efficiency. Basically, just Purple Dragon's Fang's Flight is worse. Home Spirit Unique Gloves have been nerfed. Wait, have been nerfed badly. Fire damage taken per second while flame touched of the on the annihilation's approach unique boots was a bit high. As such, we have updated these boots. Take six thousand fire damage per second. Wait, previously ten thousand. That seems really painful. <laughs> Apps with inferior edge unique sword have added max now have added maximum lightning damage equal to twenty percent of player energy shield. When I was doing a Inquisitor Battle Mage uh, um, I was I was using a Inquisitor Battle Mage Arc Mage support or Arc Mage um build. I was or not Arc Mage, just just normal Arc. Just a normal my Arc Mind skill. Uh I've been using help um Heon's Fury. Imperial Edge could actually be better than Heon's Fury, because Heon's Fury, you gain increased lightning damage based on your number of frenzy charges, but this might actually be better, especially if you're using Spellblade support. Oh, they've changed Relicitious Impatience again. I guess they were getting impatient with it. You now count as having maximum number of endurance, frenzy, and power charges, rather than having 
your minimum and maximum set while stationary. I don't actually know what that changes. Boots of Allure were buffed so that Phantasms and Raging Spirits refresh their duration on rares and uniques, not just uniques. Uh, Replica Mist Wall. Oh. You're at maximum chance to block spell damage if you've not blocked recently. Previously, plus 75% chance. Okay. That's a big buff for Replica Mist Wall, because now you can have uh, buffs to maximum sp spell block. Replica Perfect Form has been reworked. Now provides Versatile Combatant and 20% attack block. What is Versatile Combatant again? Is that... no. Versatile Combatant. Oh. So they give you a bunch of attack blocks so you can hopefully overcap and then get a bunch of spell block. No, oh, okay. So Replica Perfect Form is now a block-focused chess piece. Replica Bitter Dream now... Now is supported by a level 15 elemental penetration. Replica Better Dream was already very good. Now it's going to be very, very good. Okay, I have no problem with that. Our sacrifice continues to suck. Mm -hmm. Bunch of changes to experimented weapon types. A lot of changes to experimented weapon types. They added a bunch of experimented bases too. Or they're going to. I'm not going to go over the ruthless specific changes. I don't really cover ruthless stuff. Foundry map boss has been adjusted to be a single boss fight. Health has been increased. Can I use corpse rain when not in full life? And able to use their corpse rain and spawn rat skill more often. The number of molten mortars spawned by the cauldron has been increased. Foundry map. Is that the one I think it is? Foundry. Foundry. Boundary. Oh, no, I'm confusing it with Silo. Never mind. Oh, well, whatever. I don't need that. Bunch more Kirik. The Kirik mods that we're going to get this league are here. No Harvest. For anyone who's sad about that. Uh... UI changes. This I'm actually quite interested in this. So hovering over the create button in the character select now displays how many character slots you have. That is really good. Uh, shift click item. Shift click on faded items in your inventory to remove them from trade and sell windows. That's great. Shift click currency items in your main inventory to only sell or trade a partial stack. That's really good for splitting stacks when you accidentally grab a full stack and you need 19 instead of 20. That's really really actually amazing. Control click on NPCs in the campaign. You can now that you can sell items to now brings up the sell item interface. Yosa brings up the purchase interface. Uh, control click on Tasumi brings up the trade div card trade interface. Prove the highlighting of basic jewel slots when it's, when they're searched for on the path tree. Close button on the betrayal and investigation board. And then a ton of bug... Oh, actually, not a huge amount of bug fixes. I can glance over this. Correct behavior with Skull Cascade and Curses.
an issue with returning projectiles, dealing more damage than they're supposed to, with ailments. Minions now take damage from Cirrus' storms when they wouldn't before, but because of a bug. Fixed a bug uh, where volcanic fissure can be supported by ballista totems. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. Uh, fixed a bug where mage blood... Oh, no one cares about that. No one has a mage blood. Oh, very few people do. Fixed a bug where Ark was not able to chain back targets had previously hit. Wait, that was a bug? Cannot, still cannot chain, chain to a target immediately after chaining from it. So that means they can chain back and forth between... Wait. That means they can go in a triad between three different things and, like, zap it a bunch of times. That's cool. So Ark actually got a little buff there. Fix a bug where urgent orders did not support some Ray Spectre. Where urgent orders did not support Ray Sp Urgent orders is a... Is for war cries. Why... Why would that support specters? Sword skills have plus two per two seconds to cool down. Sports war cry skills. Why would that support specters? Why is that supposed to support specters? I'm overlooking something. I don't know what, but I'm overlooking something. Triggered skills could target something you don't have line of sight for. That is a buff to triggered skills. Deck stacking ballistas, yeah. Um, Siege Commander, I think it's Siege Commander, the bow that allows you to have more ballistas based on your decks would also work quite well. Iron Commander, that's what it's called. And hook was fucking up. Usual. Blink arrow and mirror would display the life incorrectly. Radius per rage and chain hook was wrong. Glacial hammer did not state inscription. Some things. Ball volcanic fissure. Reeve. Misery and Darkness cannot award a Shroud of Lightness with three Abyssal Sockets? You can get three Abyssal Sockets on a Shroud of the Lightless? Yeah, you could certainly get some good Siege Ballista stuff with the uh, Pyrophont. Fix a bug that could lead to the visuals of Azara Slash not matching its damaging area. That's a big problem. I'm glad they fixed that. I feel like I have actually seen someone deal, like, die to that in this last league. A friend I was playing with, actually. Because it did not seem like they were hit, but they got hit anyways and died. Fixed bug with trade window does not correctly account for merging currency stacks and st when calculating if you have sufficient space to accept a trade. Oh, there was a huge, huge issue with uh, cat like um, converting catalysts that would cause that to be a pain. I hated that. Mm-hmm. Fixed a bug with the cosmetics panel. Sometimes did not display your gems correctly if you had multiple of the same gem type. Mm -hmm. Inaccessible shrine could spawn the graveyard map. Okay. 
And fixed a bug with a finisher. Okay. So that's all of the patch notes for this league. Oh shit, there's a lot. Now, I'm just going to very quickly go over Affliction as a league itself. And this will be the kind of the end of the stream here. So, Path of Exile Affliction. You cleanse the... You'll cleanse the Viridian Wildwood of its affliction, earning valuable rewards and alert and earning the yeah, learning the ancient ways of Esmeri Wanderers. And through that, you can get one of three Wildwood Ascendancy classes in addition to your current Ascendancy class, and you can get them on any character. You encounter sacred wisps that beckon you to enter overgrown passages. So basically, of all side areas except for their green. <laughs> Instead of there being a timer, there's an amount of power you have for light. When you run out of light, you get kicked out. You have to make whatever you can out of the place. Control your challenge. You can collect wisps in the wildwood, and you can disperse them into the environment, and, ha that w and they will inhabit randomly chosen monsters, increasing their power and also their rewards. So basically, you can release wisps from the wildwood as if they were tormented spirits. Probably They probably won't run away, though. Some wisps can grant rarity bonus, item quality bonus, or drop currency items. There's three different uh, wildwood ascendancy classes. They each have something cool that you can get, and you get, them, you get your points through doing the quests for each of the different masters in the uh, wildwood. Okay, first Sensi is the Warden of the Magi. This focuses on weapon tinctures, which go into your flask slots. They function kind of like... They function like flasks, but I don't believe they... I believe you just toggle them on and off, and you can only have one on at a time. You basically can swap between whichever tinctures you want to have on you. So this one, uh, it triggers whenever you... Or, wait... No, it just triggers whenever you're on, whenever it's just toggled on. Damaging hits always stun enemies that are on full life. Hits inflict four wither debuffs on enemies that are on full life. Hits deal frenzy charges, as an example. The implicit is something that you can get, and the explicits can be gotten through rolls. You can buy them from a merchant that sells the uh, or the the same quest person that gives you the warden. Uh, Ascendancy Points also sells the tinctures. Here's another one that just gives you Culling Strike, and it gives you the ability to steal rare monsters modifiers. Then there's the uh, actual Warden Passive Tree right here. Hits against marked enemies cannot be blocked or suppressed. Rare and unique enemies within 120 meters have many map icons. That sounds fun. Defenses from equipped body armor are doubled if it has no socketed gems. Okay, uh, Combs Heart. Very good. Plus 50% to all element resistances if you have an equipped helm with no socketed gems. 25% increased maximum life if you have equipped gloves with no socketed gems. 30% increased movement speed if you have equipped boots with no socketed gems. Okay, that's really interesting. I feel like there, there's a whole lot of things you could do with that. Uh, Wildwood Blessing grants level 20 bark skin skill, which basically just you gain bark on you over time, and when you take damage, you lose bark instead of losing life, I think. Uh, tends to avoid non-damaging ailments per bark. Reduce duration of damaging ailments per bark. Can apply tinctures to your weapon, so just can use tinctures. Tinctures applied to you have a 75% increased effect per empty flask slot. So they go into flask slots, so basically just however many you want to have. So you kind of have to decide whether you want tinctures, you want flasks, or just like try to minimize both of them so you can get enduring things to fusion. And finally, nature's concoction. Flasks adjacent to applied tinctures... Gain three charges when you hit an enemy with a weapon no more than once every second. Blast 
adjacent to applied tinctures have a 30% increased effect when used if you've hit an enemy with a weapon recently, so in the last four seconds. Okay. Isn't that cool? That'd be really good for helping regenerate flasks. I actually... I can't remember which bill it was, but I was working on one recently that I was having trouble getting, like, the last few charges I needed. So this actually might benefit that build, whichever one that was. Okay, Warlock Ascendancy. So this one's really interesting. The quest person you can buy corpses from. Corpses that you can actually summon as specters. So this is level 64 corpse. This, these are the things it casts, what it uses. This corpse type. Uh, based on the corpse type, that with the, the corpse that you consume, you can get different benefits. So the ravenous scale of Blood Hunt here is you can eat a corpse of a particular type. If you eat a corpse of a humanoid, you deal more damage to humanoids. If you eat a corpse of a construct, you deal more damage to constructs, and so on. Okay. Summon Dark Effigy skill. I have no idea what that does. Probably curses. Okay, Warlock Power. She's one of the three attached options. Okay, so there's a Penance mark now. So, when they're hit, it spawns... This is really interesting. When, it, when they're hit, it spawns multiple enemy phantasms. Which means that this uh, the penance mark effectively works kind of like a writhing jar, except for you don't have to worry about charges. It just spawns a bunch of shit. So if you want uh, a bunch, if you want to be able to trigger on kill effects, the penance mark is really good for that. Pacify curses all targets in area has no effect at first, but once sixty percent of the duration has expired. They do not deal any damage for the last 40% of the duration. So, if you time that right, you could potentially just make the Shaper completely Im impotent, for example. Very cool. That would require a lot of skill to use, though. <laughs> you gotta figure that one out. I don't really know how... That, how... that sounds hard. Uh, affliction skill... Permanently afflicts any of your damage on minions in a targeted area, causing them to take physical damage over time at an accelerating rate. Uh, basically, affliction is a curse you can curse your minions with, and they will explode on death. Simple as that. Following this line down, uh, enemies pacified by you take 20% increased damage, so the uh, deals no damage after 60% of the duration is gone. One. Minions affected by affliction, so the... Uh, Explosion 1, have Onslaught, Phantasms from Penance Mark have a 50% chance to grant a Vol Soul on death, and grant 50% increased Flash Charges. That sounds really cool. That would help you if you're trying to maintain enough Vol Souls for your skills. What else do we have here? Sanguinemancy. Skills costs that cost life instead cost mana. Skills that reserve life instead cost mana. Or said reserve mana. Removes all... Wait, what? Let's try that again. Skills cost life instead of mana. Skills reserve life instead of mana. Removes all mana. Life reservation efficiency of skills. So... Blood magic? <laughs> but life reservation efficiency instead of more life? Okay. Well, if you want to go blood magic, you can... Ma mesh sanguimancy with that. Cannibalized Faith. Spells you cast gain add a physical damage equal to 75% of their life cost. If life the life cost is not higher than the maximum, if the life cost is not higher than the maximum, you could spend. Wait, what? Spells you cast yourself gain added physical damage equal to 75% of life cost. If the life cost is not higher than the maximum you could spend. So it, they don't gain damage if you can't recast them. I think. 
I believe that's what that's saying. Okay. Uh, Crimson Power removes all energy shield. Gain life instead of maximum energy shield from equipped armor items. Minus 6 maximum life per level. Characters inherently gain plus 12 maximum life per level. Okay. I definitely think of some characters where Crimson Power sounds good. That's cool. Okay. Definitely really interested in uh, the fact that you can buy corpses specifically to turn to specters. That sounds really cool. Um, for example, this is this is just the Hydra, the, the Chaper Guardian, the Hydra here, that you can just spawn because you feel like it. That's really cool. Or you can eat him and gain some of his abilities, I think. The final is the Primalist. Uh, you can get some charms, which you can socket into the Primalist tree here. So charms, for example, they can be rolled differently, and you can buy them from the Primalist themselves, the quest giver. Chance to fortify. Speed cannot be modified below the base value, so you can't be frozen. Or you can be frozen, but has no effect on you. You can be chill, but has no effect on you. Uh... Hinder, maim, uh, pin down, none of those affect you. Uh, movement speed per frenzy charge, 7% chance to take less area damage. Curse enemies you or your minions kill to explode on death, affects the consecrated ground linger. Uh, so basically, you can get pieces of different ascendancies added as explicits on charms and those charms can be socketed into this tree here and you have three charm sockets to put things into so work cries attempt to shake items from corpses your work cries can open chests so you can potentially uh you can potentially drag more items out of already dead mobs and they open chests, which is cool. I assume that also includes barrels. Increased character size. Equip a wildwood rucksack, which is 20 inventory slots. So you can expand your fucking inventory with this, which is amazing. It just has, like, this little extra bar for it. So, our uh, loot goblins. I'm looking at someone in particular right now. <laughs> Might enjoy the wildwood rucksack. Then we have our... Three charm sockets, which you can just put different pieces from different ascendancies in. I'll be honest. Well, Primalist is cool, but I don't know. Like, I am very interested in the tinctures. I really, really am. Not so much in the bark skin, but I'm really interested in. Like, I especially would like the Detect Evil from the Warden. That sounds really cool. Tinctures can apply to your equipped weapons. Uh, it does not specify that they have to be melee weapons. So, all of them. It doesn't even specify that they can't be, like, wands, for example. Your, these tinctures can apply to your wands. So maybe maybe it's anything that isn't a spell? <laughs> Walmart Headhunter. Yeah, the uh, Tincture of the Chase definitely is Walmart Headhunter now, isn't it? Okay, let's finish this up. So, oh, so we get to see some of the new uniques. Oh, actually, before I, before I look at those, uh, there is a replica Badge of the Brotherhood now that involves... Endurance charges. Just wanted to say that. I haven't had a chance to actually look at it, but it sounds really cool. Untouched Soul Gold Amulet. Plus 40 for each empty red socket on an equipped item. Okay, so... Plus to max life for each empty red socket. Plus to accuracy for each empty green socket. Plus mana for each empty blue socket. And plus all res for each empty white socket. Yeah, being able to get uh, charms that just show 
that just give you pieces of other ascendancies does seem pretty frickin' strong. Tricksters with Arn's anguish and Ferrules are obnoxious. Yeah, that sounds about right. Do you mean the basic Ferrules or the replica Ferrules? Because I feel like that's the replica one you're, it would be. Unless I'm remembering wrong. In any case, they seem to be going, doing something about empty sockets this league, which is I'm kind of interested in. Okay, the replica one. Trickster smile. Reflect cold, reflect lightning. It's an armor evasion base. Reflect fire. Enemy deals. When an enemy hit deals elements of damage to you, the resistance to those elements becomes zero for four seconds. When an enemy hit deals elemental damage to you, the resistance to those elements becomes zero for four seconds. So if something does a particular set of type of damage to you that you can benefit on, you can just destroy them with that type of damage. That would be really good for people who use cold damage and are fighting the Shaper, potentially. No, that's very niche. Yeah, 33% chance that triple damage does sound pretty nice. Pragmatism, Colosseum Flate. Plus 12 to socketed skill gems. Holy fuck. Minus 2 to level of socketed skill gems per socketed gem? Okay, so basically, you. Okay, so your whatever skill, whatever support gems you put in with whatever skill ge or support gems you put in with the skill gem, you have to make sure that they are absolutely worth the slot and not the plus two to level, because the plus two to level of, of gems is really, really good for certain skills. That's interesting. Yeah, that is the other thing, that you do have to be tanky enough to withstand the hits. And I was specifically thinking of Uber Shaper, too. I was tanky enough to to withstand two, maybe three of the uh, bullet hell projectiles, but eh, that's very hard to do, anyways. Turn of ultimatum. We have tainted catalyst. So you can apply a random and type and amount of quality to a corrupted jewelry item. Sounds great. I love that. Uh, as a side note. In addition to ultimate and returning, anyone who has a metamorph stash tab specifically that they have bought with microtransact like as a microtransaction, it is now being converted into an ultimatum tab. So it will be able to store the inscribed ultimatums as well as still store the catalysts that metamorph would have. Transfigured gems. Oh my gosh, do we actually get to see some of them now? That's cool. Frozen Legion of Rallying. I'm not really familiar enough with this to know what part of this is new. Attack used by your statues to deal damage in area around them while stepping forward. This skill cannot repeat, can only be used by statues from Frozen Legion. I guess maybe the rallying is... No, I don't know what the rallying is in that. Volcanic Fissure of Snaking. Erupts three additional times. Cool. Bladestorm of Uncertainty. Um, maximum four blade storms at a time. That might be it. The uh, 
Ray's zombie of falling is really fucking cool. Because you don't need a corpse of the zombie, and you just drop a zombie on this particular location. It's an impact that cannot be evaded. It kills the zombie, and it has a chance to deal double damage, which is fucking cool. I want I want Ray's zombie of falling mines, so you can just like drop a ton of zombies suddenly. That would be so cool. Flame Dash of Return. Teleports to a location, damaging, leaving a trail of burning ground, then repeats the teleport in the other direction. Okay, so you can jump forward, and then it jumps you back. I guess if you want to use that to deal damage? Okay. Firestorm of Pelting. Uh, flaming bolts rain down over the target area. They explode when landing, dealing damage to nearby enemies. Maximum 10 Firestorms at a time. That's a lot more than usual. I think Firestorm of Pelting is the old Firestorm ability. Like the old Firestorm style. That's actually really cool. I like having more options. I like the new Firestorm, but this is just as cool to have that back as well. Firestorm of Meteors. A large flaming bolt falls towards the target area. The bolt explodes when landing, dealing damage to nearby enemies. So that's just... Firestorm of Meteors is, is the one we have right now. Firestorm of Pelting is the old one. And both of them we will get as separate gems. Uh, Blight of Contagion. So this is... This is Contagion and Blight together, like, causing each other, which is interesting. Hindu channeling adds layers of damage to the debuff. Each of them duration, damaging buff is spread by Contagion. So this is kind of like the old Frostbolt, Frost no or Ice Nova combination, except for this is your Contagion and your Blight working together. Frostbomb of Instability, which I'm really excited for. This is a less... This Frostbomb does less damage, but it has no cooldown. Um, it also has a cast time instead of being instant, which means that you can spawn a ton of them. I really want to try this with mines, again, like everything else. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just realized Arcanist Bran, Ray Zombie of Falling. That sounds amazing. That sounds really fucking fun. Okay, Detonate da Dead of Scavenging. So this does more damage, like way more damage than the normal Detonate Dead, but it can't target corpses you've created. So that is a cool idea. Blade Trap of Great Swords. There's a trap which, once triggered, swings two copies of your equipped two-handed weapon around in a circle instead of your one-handed weapons. That's cool. Double strike of impaling, killing blows cause impales on enemies to reflect on enemies to reflect damage to surrounding enemies. Cool. Barrage of volley fire. After short preparation time, you attack repeatedly with a ranged weapon. Okay, it's same as usual. The attacks have a small randomized spread. Additional projectiles are fired on the first and last attack. Only works with bows. Okay. Fires four projectiles, fires an additional ten projectiles simultaneously on the first and final attack. Cool. Link arrow of bombarding clones. Okay. Fires an arrow at the target destination. When the arrow lands, you are teleported to it, and a clone is summoned. The clone uses your bow and quiver to fire a rain of arrows. Maximum three clones. Dura base duration of 20 seconds. That is really cool. I might actually use Blink Arrow as I move in skill now that it has the cooldown reduction. Don't know if I want if I care about the bombarding clones, but I mean, hey, you could just throw Calling Strike on there, and it's just one extra thing you have, and you don't need to worry about another Calling Strike thing. And then Blink Arrow Prismatic Clones. Except for instead of they instead of them firing random arrows, they fire elemental arrows. Oh, so they use elemental hit with a bow. Okay, cool. Final animate weapon of ranged arms. Animates a ranged weapon item or lingering blade to fight by your side. 
Uh, nah, 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 nah. Maximum 16 weapons. Okay, cool. The only problem with animate weapon that I... And it's the same problem I have every fucking time. Is you need to have items on the ground to use it. If you don't have items on the ground to use it, you can't fucking use it. Which makes it kind of not reliable. Like, I want it, like I want it to just spawn a random weapon. Like, fuck having to have items on the ground. At least Lingering Blades exist, but, like, I don't even feel like it It should be, it should animate unidentified weapons. I think it should just spawn a weapon. That would make way more sense, in my opinion. And be way cooler. Okay, and then supporter packs, which don't fucking matter. So that is everything for Path of Exile Affliction, minus the changes, the removal of Metamorph, and the addition of Ultimatum in its new form. Very exciting stuff. Okay. For those who are watching this on YouTube, thank you for your time. Hope you would like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notifications. As for those on Twitch, please follow if you can. I would love that. I appreciate it so much. I'm having trouble building up my Twitch followers, but you can become one of the first ones and the next person who subscribes becomes my 25th follower which reaches my goal i've been waiting to get to for a month <laughs> okay so now that we're basically hit the three hour mark and we've spent three hours going over patch notes we're gonna call it here thank you all so much for coming i'm glad to be able to welcome someone new to the community and Thank you to everyone who is here and has been here. You all make it this really worth the time to be able to hang out and just talk about all this shit. Cause this stuff is really fun to talk about for me, and I really do want to continue doing that. I really want to keep theory crafting as we lead up towards the uh, to the release on December eighth, twenty twenty three. So. Thank you all, and I hope you have a great, great night.